We should not be putting those people in what we consider to be our reference range because there's an obvious connection between obesity and hypogonadism. It's, that is also beyond debate. But you know, we know that BMI is an imperfect measurement, right? So how many people with BMIs under 30 are actually still obese and could have slipped into this data set? Because, you know, we all know that there are plenty of like skinny fat people, you know, we know that term skinny fat, where you may have a normal body weight, but your body composition is terrible. And I like the definition of obesity that's used by many of the bariatric surgery associations, which is if you have a body fat percentage of 25% or above, that qualifies for the diagnosis of obesity. Because it's at that 25% mark, that's when you start seeing a big rise in all of the kind of obesity-related uh, medical issues that, um, that commonly you know, complicate obesity and may result in you having to go see a bariatric surgeon. Now, you can have them with body fat percentages below 25%, but 25% is where that curve kind of inflects up. So 25% body fat or above, you are obese, but you may not have a BMI of 30. So again, how many people with a BMI under 30 are actually obese by body fat percentage? It turns out it's shockingly high, in my opinion. I think I was shocked when I saw this paper. So this is a paper here. And again, different data set. We, we unfortunately, we don't have DEXA scans on the four cohorts that they use for the testosterone reference ranges. I mean, the, the cost would have been astronomical to do that. So I get it. But it would have been really nice because I think we would have excluded a huge swath of those guys from the reference ranges, and we would not have seen the numbers that we see here. So this this paper is obviously a different cohort of men, but I, I have a feeling that this is going to apply, and I want to share it with you. So this is a fairly new paper from June 2023, The Paradox of Obesity with Normal Weight, a Cross-Sectional Study, Frontiers in Nutrition. And they looked at over 3,000 people, and they did DEXA scans on all of them, and they um, also measured their BMI, and this is what they found. Super interesting. So if you had a BMI of 18.5 to 24.9, that would be considered, I think most people would consider that lean. If you say that's what the BMI is, I don't think that would raise uh, any eyebrows at all. So of that population, 26% of the men and 38% of the women were obese by DEXA scan. A quarter of the men in this lean, what would generally be considered a group of lean individuals, BMI 18 to 24.9. Nobody, again, nobody would raise an eyebrow about that, right? That whole group of men, they would have slipped right into this data set, assuming they didn't have one of those other medical contraindications. 26% of them were obese. And if you include people who are overweight, which guess what? They did overweight by BMI, okay, meaning 27, 29.9. If you look at that group, and in, in this one, they broke it up. If you were BMI of 25 to 29.9, which again, without any of those other medical issues, these, that whole group would have slid right into this data set, and I suspect that they did, okay, 69.6. So we're going to say 70% of men with a BMI of 25 to 29.9 are obese by DEXA scan. And ladies, it's 88.8% .8 for you. <laughs> the women are in trouble. Okay. So, you know, when, when, when it, when these endocrinologists just rattle off, Hey, this is a healthy, lean, you know, young population. Well, they're only right on one of those. They are relatively young. But I strongly doubt whether they were healthy, and I strongly doubt whether they were lean based off of this, this data here. So it makes sense, I think, that we should not be using uh, un an unhealthy sample of the population to derive what healthy normal reference ranges are. That, to me, that just seems like a no-brainer. What, what really should, should happen is that we should try to find several thousand, and when it comes to men, several thousand metabolically proven, metabolically healthy men who have body fat percentages, this can be debatable, but somewhere between 10 and 15%. Let's get that population age 18 to 40, and let's, and let's do this data. And then let's find out what the reference ranges are for testosterone. And my, my gut feeling is that it will be far to the right of both of the prior data, data sets, but certainly much farther to the right compared to the new ones, the new data set that we're using.